This is what you're trying to make, right? Nice, pretty, beautiful macaron cookies. Here we have bubble gum, peanut butter and jelly, chocolate fudge. So here's the deal. Macarons aren't that hard. They're, um, they require some technique, but hmm. once you figure it out, they're not that hard to do. So I'm going to show you how to make some. Mm. Oh, that shit's good. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, hi there. I've been asked to make a video on how I make my macarons, so why not? They're not as complicated as people think. Uh, everyone always says they're super tough, and it took me a while to figure it out, but once you figure out the technique, pretty easy. So we're going to make some today. get to it. So the first thing you want to do is crack some eggs. Separate out your egg whites. Super easy. Good to go, that's all you need. So, as you can see, I'm very carefully measuring. You want a hundred and forty grams. No more, no less. to do the sifting. Oh, hello. So, you're obviously at the sifting stage. Um, I've read a lot of recipes and as far as I know, this is the only way that works. So, time to do it. Never break eye contact while doing this. You know to cook with weight, not volume, right? Use grams, not cups. 144 grams powdered sugar, 144 grams almond powder. And I'll give you the rest of the measurements. You're not gonna remember anyway. You're not even listening to me, but eh, let's do it. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, I actually want to be serious here for a second because this is important. We have the eggs in the beer, in the mixer. So you're going to get your eggs going. And this is the most critical part that you absolutely have to do. Hope you got that part very important so I want to show you because consistency is the most important thing the consistency you want of your eggs before you've added anything else before it's time to add the sugar is this nice marshmallowy sticks inside nice and firm like that Here's something I didn't know, and it fooled me for a long time. You absolutely cannot use pasteurized egg whites. The ones that come in a box, you can't use it. You have to use actual egg whites. With the candy, don't mix it. Just get your temperature. Leave it as is. You're making candy. You're actually going to end up making marshmallows. That's what the meringue ends up being, basically. All right, we'll come back when it's 244. So this part is different. This is the difference between Italian macarons and French macarons. French, you add the sugar into the bowl, you mix it up, they never work out. You wanna kill yourself after about 50 times. And uh, you look up videos of 12 year old kids doing that on YouTube and getting it perfect uh, the first time. So that is why I don't recommend French. Italian turns out better. A little more forgiving. So, we are measuring sugar into a pan, put some water in, let it boil. You want to get it to a soft ball consistency, 244 degrees, and uh, I'll show you what to do after that. So now that we have the sugar and water mixture getting ready to boil, we're going to let that get up to 244, or if you don't have a thermometer, Drop a little piece in some ice water if it makes a soft ball. That's the stage you're looking for because it's basically, uh, you're basically making candy. You're making marshmallows. Now, while that is going, that is almost the perfect amount of time to mix your eggs. So we're going to let this whip, and while that's cooking up, uh, it'll be good to go. All right, we are at 244, which means we are at the candy level. So... It is time to mix it in. So turn it on low because you don't want to splash stuff everywhere and slowly start pouring it in the side of the bowl. Once it's all mixed in, just turn it on high. You're going to turn it on high until the bottom of the bowl is cold to the touch. If you touch it right now, it's hot. It's 244 degrees. So we're going to turn it on high and come back when this is nice and cool. About three minutes or so. You know, three minutes. That's about how long you want to wait.
mix up your meringue. Now here's the deal with the meringue. It looks like this. Nice and thick, tastes a little bit like marshmallows. You want to take three quarters of it and put it into your dry batter. Leave the other quarter out. You can mix that in later. So, here is what you're trying to do. Besides incorporate it, you're trying to get the air out of the whip. Why? I don't fucking know. It makes no sense to me. You whip it into a meringue, get all that air into it, and then you have to get the air out of it, smoosh it out. Who knows? It's French. Well, <laughs> this one's Italian. But who the hell knows? I don't know. All I know is you end up with little piles of shit if you don't get the air out. So, mix it around, smoosh it down the middle. Mix it around, smoosh it down the middle. Mix it around, smoosh it down the middle. Turn the bowl, make sure you're getting it all nice and good. Once it's pretty well incorporated, which it is not yet at all, and you want about 80% incorporated. So, as you can see, there's still chunks of marshmallow left. It kind of falls off in chunks. No biggie. Now's where you mix the rest in. I totally should not have done that in front of you guys. Do not tell my wife I do that. So, now you mix it up. Here is the part that's weird. You're going for consistency. There's really no good measure of time, number of strokes through the bowl, number of times you mix it up. You want to incorporate it well. Make sure there's no chunks of batter because that almond flour will get a little chunky if you're not careful. Here's the trick I learned. It's better to undermix than overmix. If you overmix, it flattens out. You end up with no feet, it cracks, it gets hollow. It's just shitty all around. Don't overmix. But how do you know what is overmixed? And what is the perfect mixture? If you read online, all the guides will tell you you want a nice flow, you want it to be like lava, a nice lava flow. Here's the issue with that shit. When's the last time you saw lava? Hmm? I haven't. I don't know. I don't fucking know what lava flow is like. So, I guess. I was like, that looks like a lava flow. I, uh, I saw some Disney movie sometime back that had lava in it. And I, uh, I think that's it. I don't know. No one knows what lava really flows like. So, anyone that says that is just copying some bullshit that some person said at some point. Here's what you want. You want it to be incorporated enough that there's no chunks. But remember, it's a cookie. When you're cooking it, when you're baking it, all that stuff is, most of the imperfection is going to bake out. You want it to be thick enough to hold up its shape, to get a nice firm texture when you leave it out to dry, but you don't want it to be so loose that it just falls apart. If you've incorporated it and there's almost no chunks, you're fine. It's better to undermix. So I don't even worry about lava. Here's what I worry about. See this where it falls off? That's fine. Every tutorial on the internet will tell you it's not fine. I make beautiful macarons with that consistency. In fact, let's do that right now. All right, so I filled up a piping bag. If you don't have a piping bag, just use a quart bag. Use whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Also, because I need the macarons to be kind of similar size, but I'm bad at eyeballing it, I just, on the back side, drew circles. Okay, that other one was the back side. So, on the back side, I drew circles. I just traced them around a shot glass, and there you go. The piping is pretty easy.
you want to get it close to the size of the circle. It's going to expand a little, but since you undermixed it, it's not going to expand a ton. All right, so as you can see, I've uh, piped them out. Now you want to get the air bubbles out. Drop it, you know, six, ten times, whatever. Just get some air bubbles out. Okay. Now we let it sit uh, about 20 minutes. Form a All right, now that we have dropped them, let them sit, we... Uh, we're just going to let them sit for about 20 minutes, firm up the... I tried it without. I tried just putting them in, and they never form a foot. So I'm guessing the chance to sit and build a kind of uh, skin on top of it really matters. Use this time to preheat your oven. So I'm going to set the oven for 300, and I'm going to turn the timer off for 20 minutes. Pop these bad boys in. See you in a few. All right, so they've been uh, resting for about 18 minutes, and if you get close, you can see that when you touch them, there's a slight film, nothing comes off on my finger. I think we're ready to bake them. 300 degrees, 16 to 18 minutes. I prefer 16, 18 is a little tough. Let's put them in. Oh man, look at that. Is that pretty or what? Now, admittedly there's a few that didn't come out the best. The foot's a little uneven. To be honest, I probably undermixed it a little bit. I'll be the first to admit my fuck ups. But overall, not bad at all. Mix it a tiny bit more than I did. You're good to go. All right, so here's a cool thing about microphones that I didn't know. And if, if they're so finicky, why is it that every patisserie has just a million of them that come out perfect? Uh, the answer is that macarons need a few days to rest. No matter how good they are and they come out, no matter how hard they are, no matter how burnt, no matter how whatever. Put them in a Tupperware container lined with parchment paper between the layers and let it sit on a counter for two to three days. That's really going to soften it up a lot. What happens is the moisture and humidity... Oh, oh, Hey there, little lady. Who's my girl, huh? Who's my girl? Come here. Who loves you, Daddy? So, here's the thing about the macarons: is it takes it takes about a day or two for the the humidity inside the cookie that um, to seep, absorb into the shell. And eh, fancy smudge is hot. It softens it all. It makes the texture better. You'll notice it may still be tiny bit hard. If your shell's a little hard on the, um, even after you've rested them, go ahead and put your ganache on, put your filling in, it's, and then let them sit in the fridge overnight. It's going to absorb that moisture from the ganache. Your ganache is going to get a little drier, your macarons are going to soften up, and no matter how bad they were, I once burnt the shit out of one just to see how much I could recover. It was supposed to cook for 16 minutes, cooked it for 25, came out hard, came out brown on the bottom, but it sit for two days. Put some filling in it, put it in the fridge, and you wouldn't have known. It's perfect. So, do you think? Say hi, Macy. Say hi. Aww. Who loves Daddy, huh? Can I kiss? You guys can turn off the video anytime now. I'm just going to be playing for a little while. Who's my little girl? 